Hi everybody, um, today we are going to learn how to find exact trig values using special right triangles. Okay, let's start with a little bit of um, terminology that we're going to need to know. So go ahead and draw a nice um, big XY axis. So let's start with some important angles that we know. So we know that this is 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 270, 360. Now we know that we can also go negative, and we go negative, we work backwards, so this is negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, and negative 360. Okay, um, let's uh, talk about how do you, how do you um, describe where an angle falls. So in this first box up here, we call this quadrant 1, and we use Roman numerals. Our next box we call quadrant 2. Our next box we would call quadrant 3, so I, I, I. And our last one is quadrant 4, and you say I, V. V is 5, so it's like saying 1 before 5. Um, now say you are given an angle, maybe one that looks like this. Let's say that, that we call that 140 degrees. So this side right here, this is called your initial side. And wherever your angle falls, this is called your terminal side. Terminal just meaning ending. Now as we talked about, um, your unit circle doesn't end at 360. So imagine you have an angle that makes a full circle, but then it keeps going and it ends at the same spot. If you have an angle that ends at the same spot, we call that angle, so that would be like in blue right here, right? It ends in the same spot. We call that coterminal because it ends in the same spot. So that would just be 360, right? A full rotation plus another 140, and that's 500 degrees. So 500 degrees and 140 degrees are coterminal. You can also have a coterminal angle that is negative. So if a full circle is 360, and then it's, um, you subtract 140, you'd get 220. So this angle is negative 220. And they are all coterminal because they all end in the same spot. So if I asked you to find a positive and negative coterminal angle um, for 320, well, one thing you could do, so imagine you do a full circle, a full 360, plus another 320. Well, 360 plus 320 is 380. Oops, sorry, 680. So 680 degrees is coterminal. Could add another 360, and that would be another coterminal angle. Or you could find a negative one, so right here. So to find that, you would do 360 minus 320, and that's 40, so that coterminal angle is negative 40 degrees. Okay, um, let's talk about how to convert from degrees to radians. So our conversion rate is pi radians equals 180 degrees. So if I'm going from degrees to radians, I'm going to do some dimensional analysis. Since I have degrees on top, to cancel it out, I want to put degrees on the bottom. And then I need something that it's equal to, which is pi. Now my units canceled out here, and then you just multiply going straight across. So I have 120 pi over 180, which if you simplify that fraction is just... 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 radians is the same as 120 degrees. Now if I'm given anything in radians, like pot, negative pi over 12, when I'm doing problems, I always convert it to degrees. I think it's easier to work with. So I have radians on top, so I need radians on the bottom to cancel it out. Pi is equal to 180 degrees. If you multiply straight across, your pi's will cancel out. So I have negative 180 degrees divided by 12 which is negative 15 degrees. Now, the most important thing when we're finding um, exact values of different angles is going to be what's called the reference angles. The reference angle is a distance from your angle to the closest x-axis. So look at 50 degrees. If I draw a little line to the closest x-axis, which in this case is at 0 degrees, 
I can see that that distance is 50 degrees. Your reference angle is always going to be positive. When I do 160, here's my closest x-axis, so my reference angle is 20 degrees. For 255, which is in quadrant 3, here's my closest x-axis, and that distance between 180 and 255 is 75 degrees. And here's my reference angle for 345 degrees. The distance between 345 and 360 is 15 degrees. So we always use our reference angle to help us find exact trig values. So here are the steps for finding that. First thing you're always going to do is create a right angle, or a right triangle with your given angle. Then you find the reference angle, and then all you have to do is use your special right triangle ratios to help you find the values. So if I ask you to find the sine of 30 degrees, here's 30 degrees. First thing I'm going to do is drop down an altitude to create a right triangle. This is my reference angle which is 30 degrees. Now this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, so I'm going to mark it up. 1, 2, root 3. I know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that means that the sine of 30 degrees is 1 over 2. Okay, what if I ask you to find the tangent of 135? So 135 falls in quadrant 2, but we're not actually going to work with 135. I'm going to create a right triangle, and we're actually going to work with the reference angle, which in this case is 45 degrees. Now this is a 45, 45, 90, so we have to mark it up. 1, 1, root 2. The only thing is, this value right here is going to be negative because it's moving towards the left. Our hypotenuse is always positive, so it's really just the legs you need to watch out for. Now, I know that the ratio for tangent is opposite over adjacent. So, to find the tangent of 135, I'm really just looking at the reference angle. So, I see that opposite is 1, adjacent right here is negative 1. So, the tangent of 135 degrees is negative 1. Okay, what if I ask you to find the cosecant of 300 degrees, which is in quadrant 4? Create a right triangle. Here my reference angle is going to be 60 degrees. So mark it up. I have 1, 2, negative root 3 because it's going down. Now my ratio for cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. Remember the reciprocal of sine. So the cosecant, to find the cosecant of 300, I use the reference angle. I see that the hypotenuse is 2, and the opposite is negative root 3. And then all you have to do is rationalize your denominator. So negative 2 root 3 over 3. Okay, um, here I'm given a negative um, angle, but it doesn't matter. We still follow the same steps. Create a right triangle. Here my reference angle is going to be 30. Remember, it's always positive. So mark it up. Negative 1, 2, negative root 3. Negative because it's going down and to the left. Remember, hypotenuse is always positive. So the ratio for cosine is op or sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to use my reference angle, and the cosine of negative 150 degrees is negative root 3, which is adjacent right here, over 2. Okay, now in this case, I am given um, my angle in radians. So the first thing I'm going to do is convert that to degrees. So 2 pi over 3, pi on the bottom, 180 degrees on top. My pi's cancel out, and 360 um, divided by 3 is 120 degrees. So this is actually like saying, asking us to find the cosine of 120 degrees, which I think makes it a little bit easier to work with. So if I drop this down, I can see that my reference angle is 60. So if I mark it up, it's negative 1, 2, positive root 3. So I know that my 
ratio for cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of 2 pi over 3, use the reference angle, is negative 1 over 2. Adjacent, which is right here, over the hypotenuse. Okay, well, what if you're not given a picture? Well, all you have to do is create your own. So I know that 330 degrees falls somewhere in quadrant 4. Drop your right triangle, and then it's just like the ones we've been doing. So here my reference angle is 30, so negative 1, 2, root 3. My ratio for tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of 330 degrees is opposite, which is negative 1, over adjacent, which is root 3. And then if we rationalize, we get tangent of 330 degrees is negative root 3 over 3. Okay, two more quick examples. Cosecant of 210 degrees. Well, I know that co 210 falls in quadrant 3. Drop your right angle like this. And I know that my um, reference angle is 30. So negative 1, 2, negative root 3. I know that my ratio for cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So the cosecant of 210 is the hypotenuse, which is 2, over the opposite, which is negative 1. So the cosecant of 210 degrees is negative 2. All right. And last example, I have the sine of 3 pi over 4. Well, 3 pi over 4, that's kind of hard for me to figure out where that lies, so I'm going to convert that into degrees. And if you simplify that out, you get 135 degrees, which falls in quadrant 2. So that means that my reference angle is 45 degrees, so I have 1, negative 1, root 2. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 3 pi over 4 is opposite, which is 1 over the hypotenuse, which is root 2. And then all you have to do is rationalize, and you get root 2 over 2. So just remember, um, use your reference angle, and then all you're doing is using your special right triangle ratios. Just be careful for those negatives.